So today's experiment, we're looking at still using the law of conservation of energy to see the many uses of it. And Peyton here, Peyton the Magnificent, is going to shoot a dart, a blow dart, right into this uh, block over here. And so we're going to have momentum to start with and momentum to end with. Um, but it's tricky trying to hand time how fast a dart is moving across somewhere because it moves so very fast. So what we can do is embed that dart into something more massive, which will slow down the same momentum and make it more measurable. Then we'll measure how fast the block is going this way by one. We're going to get the distance of where the center of mass of this block lands. And two, for the timing to find the velocity of the whole system, um, we are going to use the time it takes to free fall from that height, which is 0.73 meters. Okay, Peyton the Magnificent, we are ready for your best shot. Yeah. Okay, big blow here, as big as you, oh, my finger got stuck. Okay, all right, we're ready. I do have sausage fingers. Okay, not a bad shot. But since it didn't stick in, it's going to make our math tricky because now we have to know how fast the dart's bouncing back. So we can do another shot until we actually get that thing stuck into there, okay? Not bad. Not bad. You can do it, Peyton. Big blow. Big blow, but don't miss. Okay. Not bad. 17 more shots. We have time, guys. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Okay. You got this. Big blow. Big blow. Our dart is falling apart there. There we go. Woo! Right here on the 13, which is 33 centimeters. Okay. So now what are we going to do with that 33 centimeters? Okay. Well, let me show everybody what we're going to do with that 33 centimeters. Am I at the right distance from the uh, camera? Yeah. yeah, you can't see your face. Perfect. Won't break the lens. So the momentum beforehand is this is the momentum mass of the dart times how fast it's going. The mass of the dart is um, 3 grams. I don't know the velocity, original velocity of the dart's moving fast. This is the mass of the block at 74 grams, but it's not going anywhere, so it's got no momentum. Afterwards, um, we still have both moving, but they stuck together. Since they stuck together, they're both going the same speed, and we make it one mass. We're going to add the mass of the dart plus the mass of the block going at the same speed. And that's going to be equal to the momentum of the dart. So whatever momentum we started with, we ended with. Friction should have been minimal because I put it on the very end of the table, so there really shouldn't have been much friction. So there shouldn't have been a net external force. So now all we have to do is one thing. First, we have to calculate what the velocity, final velocity of the whole block is. Being more massive, it's going slow enough I can measure how fast it's going. First, I found the time in the air. To find the time in the air, it's that whole y equals one half a t squared plus initial velocity time. But remember, that's downward, so because the a I can't is downward. See, I can't see that. Do they? There, I can see it. Okay, and the initial velocity is downward because these are all downward. Well, I'm solving for the time. So, and so I solve for the time. It's two times the height divided by the nine point eight thing. Then I do the square root of that. Now we ought to be able to see that with that blazing yeah. sun. So it takes 0.38 seconds to free fall to the ground. Now I just found out that it went 33 centimeters. Too bad it wasn't 38 centimeters. That would make my life a whole lot easier. So 0.33 meters is how far it went. So that was almost one meter per second. To find out exactly how fast that's going, let me get my trusty calculator out. And it's um, 33 divided by 38. It is in fact, we do that one again, 33 divided by 38, 0.87. Um, so 0.87 meters per second is how fast the whole block was moving together, um, 0.87 meters per second. So that means the velocity of the whole thing is 0.87 meters per second. Now, um, the dart being 25.7 times more massive, because that's what we're basically finding out, than the whole system together, it's going to be going 25.7 times faster than that 0.87. So the final velocity of that dart is, hold on to your shorts, times 25.7, drum rolling, drum rolling, 
22 meters per second. Woo! Woo I like it. That's not a lot. That's like 45 miles per hour, and she's eight years old. That ain't bad. A 45 mile per hour dart. Won't probably penetrate your skull. But still, it's pretty good, by the way. Was that 22 that I just said? I have no idea. I was, I was too busy talking cheering. Too much. Okay. So it's time we'll do a quick pause. I'm not sure if we're paused yet. Is no, there... we're not. Hold on. Rolling. Okay. Now, so we found out that the velocity of the dart was going um, 22 meters per second by using the law of conservation of momentum. So, um, but... Since it's stuck in to that block, that's not going to be an elastic collision. You're not going to have the same kinetic energy afterwards as what you had beforehand. So this is kinetic energy. It's not the law of conservation of kinetic energy because there isn't one. So you're not going to have an, a collision unless it's an elastic collision. Only if you have an elastic collision will you have the same kinetic energy before and afterwards. But when things stick together, things cannot be elastic. You're going to lose um, a good portion of the of your, of your kinetic energy. We'll talk about what that form is in a moment. So the darts was the only thing that had kinetic energy to start with. That had nothing. So the 22 squared times the mass times a half, it's only 0.75 joules. Not a lot of energy at 22 meters per second, about 45 miles per hour. But after it hit the block, the block plus at way less kinetic energy. Because it's not moving very fast and not very fast squared is really not a very big number so to give you an idea of the efficiency of keeping the kinetic energy the efficiency of keeping the kinetic energy the ending energy over the beginning energy 0 0.029 divided by 0.75 joules is only 0 0.04 which is four percent that means we lost 96 percent of our energy in this experiment today we only kept four percent of the energy in this inelastic collision so where is that 96% uh, of the missing energy? Well, when that dart goes squeezing into the block, that inelastic collision, there's a lot of friction. And that does a lot of negative work to slow down that nail or the dart squeezing into the block and creates a lot of heat energy. So 96% of the energy that the dart had has gone into thermal energy, warming up both the dart and the block. So we only kept 4% of the energy, but we had 100% of the momentum afterwards. So momentum is great to use to find velocities of things. The kinetic energy is not so good at finding velocities because you have a lot of energy and collisions lost to that thermal stuff. But scientists use both the law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of energy to talk about what happens in collisions, especially subatomic collisions. Because in subatomic collisions, they are elastic, so both of these work to find out um, what you have before and what you have afterwards in a collision. End. Done.